Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines we got for you. The Bitcoin spot ETF, the finalization, the deadline. We got it for you. And guess what else? We got XRP, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to love it. $15 in the most accurate XRP calculator in the world, ladies and gentlemen. That and so much more. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, it's $1.74 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is off by 0.2% in the last 24 hours. Right now, 42700 plus for Bitcoin as we wait for the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. $2,247 in change for Ethereum and $91.4 billion plus for Tether market cap right there. We see number six spot as XRP has slipped down, but holding at 63 cents right now, off by 1.9 in the 24 hour, up by 4% on the seven day. The range of price right now is, drum roll please, 60, 61 cents on the bottom and 64 on the top. So XRP's dancing around a little bit today. We'll keep an eye on it. But until then, look at this, look at this. As a matter of fact, let me refresh this because there's so many people signing up. Look at this. We're getting ready to cross 600,000 registered users. 325 million on the platform. 48 incredible companies available like Ripple, Uphold, uh, and so many others, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you, don't mess around. All you have to do is sign up and register and get started today. The best, most affordable minimums for anyone in the world looking to get into private equity. If you don't believe me, Click the link and find out for yourself. You're going to, I'm telling you, it is the best private equity offering with the best minimums ever in the world. And they intend to go public sometime this coming year. So I'm super excited for that as well. Bitcoin Magazine says Fox Business confirmed the date for the final amendments to all spot Bitcoin ETFs is just in three days, December 29th. The SEC has told the issuers that applications that are fully finished and filed by Friday will be considered in the first wave. Oh, boy. The first wave of spot Bitcoin ETFs is on its way, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out. Remember, now all of this has come about because the SEC has been losing battles in court and they're now being forced to offer this product. Keep that in mind and keep this in mind, too. How many Bitcoins are in ETFs? 3.8% of max Bitcoin supply with 0.8M uh, Bit Bitcoin. If the cash only model, uh, which the SEC envisions for the spot Bitcoin ETF prevails, Grayscale will no longer have a major advantage in the U.S. market and whoever invests the most cash will prevail. BlackRock it is all about liquidity. And here you can see the chart where Grayscale has the advantage on everyone thus far, but that will soon change with the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs. It says here, uh, libertarian, no more Bitcoin. This is what I've been saying a lot here, as Chad is saying too, and I completely agree with what he's saying here. Bitcoin is on the verge of going public or corporate, right? BlackRock owns you now. Once they approve this, Bitcoin becomes Wall Street's little B word. <laughs> Don't believe it. It's still true. Know what you hold, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm exposed to it too. I have exposure to it as well. But know what you are holding and what the lay of the land is, right? Medico and uh, obviously a Ripple acquired company also partnered with RuleMatch and IBM. All cryptocurrencies on RuleMatch are handled in segregated blockchain wallets using the Medico harmonized system. You could see how this whole collaboration comes together to work seamlessly in combination with IBM Cloud HyperProtect crypto service. This is just a look, I, I point this out this morning 
to remind everybody about the foundational importance of a custody, qualified custodian, institutional or otherwise. The massive money's not coming in unless we have that qualified custodian and that seamless partnership and arrangement to make that experience very easy for anyone using it like institutions. Here's Representative Jim Hines on the stablecoin bill and what Congress is looking for from crypto just two weeks ago. It's a very important comment, and I think it bodes extremely well for projects like uh, XRP. And then you've had the prosecutions, you've had, I mean, there's just a lot of bad stuff. And then you've had the Wall Street Journal writing an overblown story about terrorist financing, which they subsequently sort of backed away from. I, I think you may have heard some of this from my colleague, Sean Kasson. My, my point is this, just to make this 20 minute rant less than 20 minutes. If you really want to move the Congress, I, I say this to every crypto person who comes into my office, Listen. you got to start demonstrating the killer app. The value add. I mean, I get so frustrated because folks come into my office and they say, we have this decentralized finance, non-hierarchical structure that would allow for the transfer of MF NFTs. And, and, and it's like, I'm a Rhodes Scholar. I don't understand a single word you just said, right? So tell me how this makes Bridgeport better. Tell me how this makes Los Angeles better. And until the industry does a better job really showing that, look, we can take remittance fees down from 8% to two basis points Ooh. or show us any positive world improving application, the industry is not going to have the benefit of the doubt. And, and the reason you need that is because not so much on our side of the, uh, of the capital, but on the other side of the capital, the, the weather is uglier and people just need to start hearing about how this stuff is going to make people's lives better. There it is. And he's talking about the Senate versus the House, right? And I think it's excellent advice. And what does he use for the example of being able to show Congress the side of Congress that doesn't get it? Show them how you can use this product to make people's lives better, like cutting remittance costs to two basis points. Wow, what could do that? Uh, XRP in the XRP ledger, right? Yeah, I wouldn't think for a second that Jim is not aware of that. Or stable coins, in fact because stable coins are really the currency of the internet, right? Then there's this. Take a listen to this clip here. ACI Worldwide. Uh, change is always a little bit uh, difficult sometimes for us as we get comfortable in certain things. And certainly some of the more traditional payment methods that uh, we've been very comfortable with for a long time up until the last uh, few years or so, or even a few months. And really with, with instant payments and the, the launch of the clearinghouses, RTP rail uh, a few years back, I think we're at about six years live on that. Uh, and of course the launch of FedNow service here just a few months ago in 2023, I, I think we will start to see some adoption uh, happening with instant payments, but it really will become through the need for a change and an education of what benefits that real-time payments can provide. Now we're seeing an alignment between Representative Jim Himes and ACI Worldwide, but what they're telling you is, Bridget Hall from ACI is telling you real-time payments are already done. Clearing House has been there for six years. Things are running great. FedNow just launched this year. It all supports instant settlement, instant movement of value. Uh, you know, again, you know, the changes we're looking for, I don't believe we'll see on the front end. I think they're back end changes. That's why I'm highlighting these particular facts that have happened here. Now, let's take a look at this. This is an amazing breakdown by Molly Elmore here. Shout out to Molly Elmore and XRP Drops for sharing this clip. Give them both a follow. I want you to take a listen here as she talks about how XRP and the value of XRP is derived from its utility and as a store of value. And she talks about the Robert Michnick and Susan Athey calculator. Remember, Robert Michnick worked at Ripple. Susan Athey still works at Ripple. And they developed this calculator. Robert Michnick went on to work and is now currently the head of digital assets for, you may have heard of them, BlackRock, right? So take a listen to this and you will love what we have after by two people, Susan Athey and Robert Michnick. Uh, and it was pretty groundbreaking in that, you know, XRP is an, and one of the real kind of 
ingenious parts about this model that is very important in understanding, in my opinion, the value of an asset like XRP is this competition between two competing forces. So XRP is a utility asset, meaning it can be used to exchange value very quickly, very efficiently. And it also can be used to store value. And as we've gone through and built all of these models, this is like the biggest theme or assumption or debatable point. And the Athne Michnik model does an incredible job of addressing this in their paper and in the model that they built. And the Athne Michnik model is very important in this series because it does a very simple and clear job of separating these two fundamental forces, the force of utility, the force of store of value. Um, and if you watch my video about the virtuous cycle, which I did a while ago, I'll put the link in the description. This is a kind of a, an electronic or energetic force that can compete in markets. And if you imagine like a cyclone where it kind of starts out sort of small and as it gets more powerful, it kind of widens and accelerates and all of the elements in this cyclone start to move faster and faster. Uh, it's kind of the opposite of what would be considered a death spiral. This is more of a positive growth oriented thing called the virtuous cycle. And in the case of the Achne Michnik model, uh, what they are, what they created a sort of calculation for is as more value gets transacted on the XRP ledger using XRP, it's going to naturally rise in price simply because there will be higher demand, more use, it probably won't be an, it's actually, I don't think it would be a very large increase in magnitude, but it would be enough that it would get the attention of people. And in this era we have of fiat inflation, where there's a lot of skepticism. If I were to hold my wealth in, let's say, US dollars, would I have the same amount of value in $1,000 today in like five years? And the answer is probably no. We're seeing inflation has really eroded, uh, eroded the value of the dollar. So there's kind of a concern, like if I have money, wealth that I want to store, where should I store it? I have to store it someplace. And if you were to observe the value of XRP steadily rising because adoption is growing and people are seeing this as more and more of a valued utility asset, then what happens is people say, hmm, got to store my wealth somewhere. Why not store it in some XRP. And what this can do is remove XRP from the circulating supply that is available for transactions. And all these sort of forces of supply and demand come into play. So if something is in demand, price goes up, and now we have another competing force that's going to pull out some of the supply, meaning these calculations of supply and demand, you have increased demand while diminishing supply. Now the price goes up some more and it creates this cycle that potentially could lead to exponential growth at some point. I think it's such a great point, and it's going to lead us to the next article here in a second. But uh, to add to that, you know, it's like the perpetual flywheel also, right? You know, it, it's the virtuous cycle is really like the perpetual flywheel as well. You have the supply and demand, the store of value, and then you have the market participants and the market makers. The market participants who need to make payments every day, but maybe they don't necessarily want to hold XRP directly in the early stages. The market makers are the ones who are making payments for their self and others every day. And they're the ones that are probably going to realize first when all of the price starts to go up for XRP that they better start buying this up because it will be more expensive tomorrow than it is today. And as Molly was describing, once that starts to become the narrative and the understanding amongst the these people in the space using the asset, watch out, ladies and gentlemen watch out because that's when you're going to see that perpetual flywheel that virtuous cycle really take off and right here interestingly enough and i want to take and just show everybody as a reminder again the market cap just to refresh here the market cap for xrp currently is 34 billion plus right that's where we're sitting 34 billion plus and and i say that because we're going to look at this xrp calculator article that's based on as i said susan athey robert michnick xrp valuation model puts xrp value at 15 dollars in the next two years based on certain criteria such as 40 billion in volume which is interesting because currently we're at 60 some cents and we're at 34 billion plus as i just showed you 
So what's interesting about this, if we go down to the calculator itself and the metrics that were used here, you can see they put 40 billion in here and then uh, 0.8 for the store of value here and the circulating supply at 58.8, which I actually think uh, is pretty close to right. So then they hit calculate and came up with $15.43. So there would be obviously a recognition in this conversation if we're just talking about $6 billion away from the current market cap right now something is being suppressed or the market hasn't clued in on the importance of the utility of XRP. However you choose to look at it, if this calculator is accurate, we're not far from an explosion from 62 cents to around 15 bucks. Maybe it's 10, maybe it's 20, who knows, right? But, and maybe some of these other factors in here are slightly skewed right but the reality is is that you could see how very quickly the asset can get to a much higher price right and knowing that susan athey at ripple robert mitchnick formerly at ripple now the head of digital assets department and market for blackrock you can see how much credibility that calculator has at least with me no question about it so maybe we're looking at a $15, but you know what? Let's look at this very quickly here. It's Egg Rag Crypto. We all love him. And uh, he says, XRP Super Guppy Update. For a clearer picture, you can refer back to the October 28th chart that he posted. And he says here, XRP is currently in a consolidation phase along a slanted trend line. And I know the audience does not like to hear the word consolidation. <laughs> reminiscent of cycle b the pattern uh mirrors previous cycles with consolidation above the trend line and a glowing green super guppy upon breaching the trend line so if history repeats itself with xrp following cycle b pattern the surge akin to previous moves could potentially uh pocket us three dollars and seventy cent plus for xrp it says consolidating your dollars and other crypto gains into xrp could easily amplify your portfolio six to seven times says here, uh, if you're sitting on a hefty sum of XRP, seems like the smart move for potential gain of six to seven times. And it says, but if you're banking on turning $100 into millions, the dog and meme coins might be your avenue. However, that's not my focus or game plan here. Mine either, Egg Rag Crypto. And I'm glad you shouted it out. So, this scenario represents my worst case scenario and my strategy aligns accordingly. He shows us here back in 2016, 2018, cycle A, and then we had a huge explosion. We experienced cycle B through 2019 to 2022. And then we saw it bust up again, right? And now we're in this cycle here and we're anticipating target one, target two, and target three. Interestingly enough, target three puts us right around that $15 mark that the Susan Athey calculator put us at just another additional $6 billion added to the market cap for XRP. Will we see that kind of explosion or will we just get that $3 testing the new or the previous all-time high? We don't know, but it is exciting to watch every single day. And I want to tell you too, if you haven't done it, the real conversation is about to begin, ladies and gentlemen, in the Freedom Zone, and you're going to want it. They did it to all of us. They lied and they did it for money. And we're going to expose it right here in the Freedom Zone. Go to digperspectives.com or click at the link underneath the video and join us inside for almost next to nothing for the conversation you won't believe. Not financial advice for me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you on the next one.